Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 14th of July and Saturday of July. Uh, in today's Mill news, some big, big news, massive news. Uh, the club do like putting out uh, massive news on a Friday. I don't know why, but here we go. This is uh, news that, uh, as everyone expected, but confirmation that uh, John Belson's son, uh, James, will be the new Mill chairman. And he's released his statement. Um, at, I think the earliest opportunity to just quell everyone's uh, concerns, and it's very promising, and it's very um, it's it's a very good statement. So a statement on behalf of the Berylson family, Mills new chairman. To our Mill family, I would like to start by saying on behalf of the Ferrelson family an enormous and very heartfelt thank you to everyone for the outpouring of love and affection for our dad following the tragic events of last week. Uh, this remains a very challenging time for us, but the many thousands of messages of support we received from our Millwall family have been a source of tremendous comfort. We are immensely grateful for the photos and video tributes uh, from the den and those who took the time to go there or sign the book, online book of condolence. Uh, your collective support means more than I can possibly begin to articulate. Uh, as we all know, Dad had a deep and infectious love for Millwall. He cared passionately about the players, staff, management and, most importantly, our supporters. It is a love that spread throughout the Barrelson family and Millwall has become a huge part of our lives for so long now. I've witnessed incredible moments of joy, drama, and success at the den alongside my dad. And these memories will last a lifetime. From this day forward, though, it is about creating new ones. John Berylson, our chairman, had dreams for this club. He had a vision and a plan. And I am fiercely determined and passionate about continuing his work and building on this foundation. It is with sincere and immeasurable pride that I take on the chairmanship of this great football club. Is what my dad wanted, and I am so thankful for his mentorship since I joined the board of directors in 2010. And blessed by his trust and faith in me, I am also grateful to my Mill colleagues for their support in recent days, but also more broadly, uh, the advice and guidance they have provided me over the years. We will pay tribute to dad at the Bristol City game, our first home league match of the season, on Saturday, the 12th of August. Uh, I hope you all can join my family for this very emotional occasion. Uh, this will mark the start of a new era, one in which we will strive to fulfill Dad's legacy. Uh, we are Millwall and we are family. James T. Berylson. Um So there you go. Like I said, uh, promising stuff there. It seems like there's some unfinished business uh, that uh, JB Jr. is hoping to fulfill. And we certainly do hope that um, that happens. It's very much a symbiotic thing. They, he's obviously got something that he wants to achieve here um, to carry on what his father did. And for us, that will mean a better standing. Like, since John Berylson's become involved with Mill, just everything has just been grinding up gear by gear by bit, gear getting better and better. Um, of course, some things never change the club shop situation and whatnot, but I mean, if you. Obviously, if you're a Millwall fan, you've been following Millwall day by day, so you you don't really know. But if you just went back to when he started and take a look at the club now and compare and contrast, you can see there has been massive, massive improvements, and there's still massive improvements in the work. They managed to get through the new training ground, which is uh, absolutely impressive to go through the absolute um, red tape. I, I, goes, I guess you could call it green tape now. Uh, they, nobody wants you to build nothing uh, these days, especially on uh, any green land, uh, green belt land. But to get that through has been absolutely fantastic. And, and of course, um, just waiting for them to start uh, doing that. And um, so to have a top of the range training ground on the way. Um, Improvements around the ground. Many many fans are saying like the food options are bad. Like the the kiosks in the stand are bad. Why don't you have food trucks come outside? We've been saying that for years and years and years, and now suddenly, last season we had it. We had the German sausages and the popcorn. I was like, yeah, of course. You gotta realize, like, especially I don't know why it took so long, but in the states, like NFL games and that, they're like 
festivals, like especially like college football, like tailgating and that stuff. I know, like we've got like twenty three occasions because the country's small, we can travel up and down. So most, quite a few fans will go to a lot of the home and away. So you're going forty six times. So is it that special? In America, where they have like eighteen NFL games or whatever, is seventeen, sixteen, and you only have nine home ones. Each home NFL game is like a massive thing. It's like a, a party, like a fair, some affair. Um, so to why that didn't translate for Millwall, I don't know. But suddenly they've started to do it. Like, okay, this is an event. This is a thing. This is an occasion. Let's. Uh, have some stuff going on around it and and you can see the improvements happen not only that but the coaching behind the scenes like we've got the under 18s and the under 21s the under 21s become national championship level, which is effectively like a uh, league one level like it's the third step down so to do that has been absolutely brilliant and that's been it hasn't just come out of nowhere it isn't just oh we got lucky we had a a really good crop of players we've been building on this step by step so which is why this statement is is kind of interesting and really pleasing that because we've been building brick by brick step by step that we have a continuation um literally um father and son and that's going to carry on we're st we're going to keep building brick by brick we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep getting better and better. Um, so, yeah, fantastic stuff uh, this is. And this is done uh, literally, I think, the earliest opportunity. Because he was sitting Shiva on Wednesday. So he must have flown over on Thursday. Or maybe he didn't even fly over. I don't know what he did. Um, he had, like, Zoom meetings and said they, they must have had, like, a board meeting, I guess. And they all had to vote. But he, I guess, because John Berelson basically owns massive controlling interest in the club now since the share uh reconfiguration I is literally just um you vote for it and, it and it goes through so um yeah but yeah good stuff now on friday as well uh Millwall announced the new kit which we all kind of su suspected expected we've seen uh clips of it i showed you in videos previously but we had confirmation that was the home shirt but i gotta say this photo is a lot better than the leaked one that we got uh the one that was filmed on a potato this is a professional grade um picture um and what do we see here highest by my little eye husky chocolate so everyone who didn't see husky chocolate on the training kit and put two and two together and then found out that Husky uh, Husky Chocolates UK company they they uh, dissolved it, and their UK website doesn't work anymore. But yeah, it's just I think they've just moved out of the UK market, um, like a lot of EU like m like small players in the uh, EU. Um, the thing the thing about the the EU and the uh, cross border thing. It, Allow literally like tiny little companies in one country to be able to uh, access markets all across Europe. Uh, well, if you're a small co a company in one country, that's that's a lot harder now that the UK is not in the EU. So there's really no point. Um, but uh, here we go. So you can see it here. It is kind of shiny. Um, it's got white uh, inside the sleeves and, and on the neck and the piping as well. Um, this is from the kitman.co.uk. Now, I've got to say here, even those these photos are a lot better than the leaked ones that we saw. This still doesn't look that good. But, spoiler alert, uh, the team were wearing this for the Gillingham game. And it does look a lot better when it's actually being worn. So, I don't know why they don't wait and just take pictures with the players wearing it because they look they, obviously they're fit athletes they make it look it's going to look well, better on them than some like 20 stone uh, like uh, beefy meal fan but uh, yeah it's it's not bad it's not bad 
Uh, the ones behind there, they're just older rear kits. There's an old, there's an old 60 kit on the left, and um, that blue and white striped one is the older rear kit from 2017, I think. So, uh, yeah, there you go. The new kit came out now. Here we go. This is a new sponsor for uh, the shirt. A Wigget Group to be Mill's 2324 back of shirt sponsor. Uh, Mill Football Club is pleased to announce that Wigget Group will become the Lions back of shirt sponsors for the 2324 campaign. In addition, the company is also proud to sponsor the club's training and travel wear for the forthcoming season. So basically, why Husky Chocolate wasn't on the training kit, apparently, uh, I think I heard this on the Mill, that Millwall podcast. Is that they didn't pay for that? Mill just gave it to them for free. It's like, oh, you, 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 like now. Obviously, they're trying to make more money by separating it up. Um, so I think to make the back of shirt sponsor a bit more, maybe they bundled it with that to make that uh, a bit more um, attractive for someone to sponsor. If the shirt's on the back, if your company logo's on the back of the shirt. It's like that's kind of a bit. Mm, that's kind of seen as a bit of a, what would you say, like a lesser lesser thing. Well, if if your logo's on the back of the shirt, but it's on the front of the training shirt, aha, that kind of elevates it a bit, another step. I can see why they've done that. So, uh, they were the short sponsor last season. The back of short sponsors for last season, Wigget Group, with more than 40 years of experience, are one of the most established con construction companies in the UK. Wigger Group are a thriving, successful company with an excellent proven track record as social housing experts in property services. Uh, to ensure a high level of operational focus, Wigger are centred around three operating divisions, mechanical, electrical and property services, with a head office based in Brentwood, Essex, and offices located in Dublin and Leicester. Wigger have a strong national presence. Uh, as, the C uh, as the CEO of Wigger Group, I am immensely proud to sponsor the back of the shirt for the football club, said Reese Wiggett. Our partnership represents our shared values of determination, resilience and unwavering support for our local community. Uh, together we believe in teamwork, passion and the pursuit of excellence. This sponsorship goes beyond branding. It builds bridges, fosters unity and fuels camaraderie. Uh, we stand proudly with Millwall, empowering dreams and creating a lasting legacy. Stuart Locke, commercial director at the Den, said, yeah, we're delighted to have Wigger Group back on board once again for the new season. Uh, Reese and all the fantastic people at the company have shown their commitment to the club over the years in various ways, and back of shirt sponsorship is a further example of strengthening those bonds. We look forward to working alongside uh, Wigger Group across the new campaign. And you can visit Wigger Group's website at wiggetgroup.com. So there you go. New, um, so obviously they went from sponsoring the back of the shorts now they're sponsoring the back of the shirt and the front of the training kit so you would think they must be getting something out of that um, to upgrade like that like they, it must be have some value for them now moving on to this ahead of the friendly against Gillingham we have this story from southernnews.co.uk Gary Rowett urges youngsters to show what they can do in Mill friendlies. A few young uh, players will be looking to make a name for themselves this summer. Gary Rout has challenged Mill young stars to show what they can do across the club's four pre-season games. Now, the squad head to Kent today to take on Gillingham for their first game in front of fans since May. The manager is set to play two different 11s in both halves, giving a number of players a chance to impress. This includes some exciting young talents currently at the den who will be looking to get more game time. Uh, during the uh, championship si championship season, uh, Rowett believes the time to shine is now for those looking to push into the first team. He told us it then. There's always that opportunity. Uh, the likes of Chin, they you know, uh, Edamo, Romain, Alex Mitchell, uh, but he's a little more senior in some ways. But there's an opportunity for all those players to show what they can do, show their sort of development. They've all done well in different parts of last season, whether that was with the under 21 or with the first team squad. Uh, we've got a squad of, uh, at the moment of 22, 23 players. And I think the aim is always to give everybody the same opportunity so, to show what they can do and the same opportunity to impress and get fitness. So we'll do the same as we did against Bromley. We'll play two teams, two 44 minutes. Maybe add a little bit of extra conditioning at half time after the game to make it feel more like a 60 minute game. 
Uh, after the Gillingham Clash, Mill will take on Sutton on July the 18th before hosting Charlton on July the 5th and Fortuna Sittard July 29th then. Uh, so yeah, um, so even though this is pre-season, normally you get like a, it's you get some youngsters thrown in just for the sake of it. Garrow still going along the lines of boundaries. What do I mean by that? So this is the first team squad, and this is the under twenty one team squad. There's no mixing. There's no mixing matching. What he's done, he's taken the best of the under twenty ones and given them cha a chance in and around the first team squad. So we've got Chinokali, or a Nino Adamalaki, Idomo Maku, Romain Essay, and Alex Mitchell, who was on loan at St. Johnson. Um, so he was playing, Alex Mitchell was playing first team football, which he's saying he's a little more senior in other ways. Um, there's no, there's no other, there's no Abdul Malik, there's no Seb Drops. It's very clear, like, there's a barrier, there's a ceiling, you need to get to that level, and then we'll get a chance in the senior squad. Isn't even though it's friendly, it's friendly. It's a friendly, and even against Bromley, like they didn't just chuck some random youngsters. It's very planned out. It's very um, clinical. Like I said, so we'll see. How did they get on? Well, we the the Gillen game happened, and here we go. Uh, I watched bits of it. I, um, I was watching it on on the uh, on the phone, and uh, my uh, Wi-Fi cut out, um, and then it lasted for about five minutes on 4G, and then I had to switch over to sound, so I could only listen to the second half. But from what I saw, the first half seemed very good, but it does seem that the first half was a lot better than the second half. So here's the report from SouthernNews.co.uk: Gillingham zero, Millwall two. Kevin Nisbet scored on his debut in the Lions' first preseason game. Yeah, it was a penalty. You see him there. Like I said, look at the kit. You can see. Doesn't it look a lot better when they're wearing it? I, I tell you what I do like. I like the shorts. I like the socks. I like the blue with the white at the top. And I like the white shorts with the blue band at the bottom. They, that does look very good. So all together as an ensemble, the shirt on its own, uh, on that hanger, the photo we saw, so-so, Seeing it here as an ensemble, very good. But here's the thing. Are you going to be a full kick wanker? No, you're not. So obviously the shirt, wearing it with jeans and whatever, or, or short, or just um, whatever you, how you wear your shirts. Um, the shirt probably is more important. Um, so, uh, Kevin Nisbet got Mills preseason off to the perfect start as he scored in his debut. In the Lions' first official friendly, the striker, signed from Ibernian last month, can book in the spot to make Mills' first half dominance pay out off at Gillen. The championship side found themselves in total control for the first half before sweeping half time changes. Uh, the second half team, featuring regulars such as Sean Hutchinson and Zion Fleming, struggled to replicate the same dominance, and Gillen threatened to equalise. But Mill will eventually put the game to bed with half time sub Adomu and Michael Lashed home in the 87th minute to Gav Garrow. Give Gary outside a strong start to their preseason campaign. Um, you can see that obviously before the game they laid a brief, and th and there's a banner there that someone's made. Um, hopefully they took that down before the match died. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. Uh, match details: the opening goal almost came in the opening minutes from Murray Wallace, assisted by the relentless winds in Kent. Yes, did your power go out? That's why my Wi-Fi went out. Because there were some power cuts um, across massive parts of the uh, home counties. Uh, my one lasted for about an hour but it, while the game was on, so not, not ideal. Uh, the defender playing at left centre back ventured forward and sent a cross into the deep. In normal conditions, the ball would have landed in Gillingham Keeper's grateful hands, but the wind sent the ball spiralling onto the roof of the net. Um, <coughs> Less freak, less, mm, uh, mm, uh, less freakish chances soon followed for the Lions who quickly showed off their superiority, having finished 57 places higher than the Jills in the football pyramid last season. Duncan Watmore got into got cut in onto his right foot and left Jake Turner needing to make a one-handed save to knock the ball away. 
before Billy Mitchell slammed an effort just past the post when the ball fell to him on the edge of the area after 13 minutes. The pressure was growing and Gillen finally broke uh, 26 minutes as in uh, in as the pressure was growing and Gillen finally broke 26 minutes in as Mill headed towards their box again. Uh, not for the first time, Watmore picked up a pocket of space and tried to spring past Jim and players, but he was taken out by former QPR defender Arnold Masterson for a stonewall penalty. Nisbet stepped up and sent his effort into the top left-hand corner as keeper uh, Turner went into the opposite direction. Uh, top left-hand corner of... He kicked it to his right. I'm pretty sure he kicked it to his right. So it was, in terms of Nisbet's perspective, it was his right. It was the top left for the keeper. This is, um, obviously, this is a new writer for um, uh, Southern News. I'm trying to get used to their writing stuff as I read it out. Uh, the only negative of a spirited first half from Mill came when George Honeyman went down in his own box. Yeah, first injury of the preseason. Hey, the 28-year-old station at right wing back pulled up after 20 minutes. He walked off the pitch minutes later to be replaced by him. Mara. At halftime, McNamara will be joined by his fellow 10 substitutes as Rout made wholesale changes. The impressive Romain essay among those taken off. The second half was a whole different ball game as an improved Jinnan who made changes of their own began to find fluency. Suddenly, the lead two side carried threat and sub goalkeeper George Song had to smother an effort from Nick Coleman uh, after the ball broke to him from a corner early in the second half. Later in the 66th minute, Long would be required again after rising Ryan Sarchin Ogley was robbed of the ball. Joe Gope uh, uh, near the halfway line. He charged through, but luckily for Ockley, uh, Long blocked his effort. Uh, that would be Jinnan's best chance before Mill managed to wrestle back some control. The second half team struggled to look as dangerous or intense as the 11 started. Uh, Youngster and Maku partnered with Andres Vogelsam up front for the second 45, looked brightest, forced a save out of substitute Jinnan goalkeeper Glenn Morris early in the half. From close range. Um, <coughs> but his crowning moment would come at the end of the game as he took the ball from the edge of the box and lashed an emphatic finish into the corner of the net. Uh, both Nisbet and the Maku also scored in the behind closed door friendly against Bromley earlier this week. Or six people, uh, six, we won six, or six other players scored. Um, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> Uh, the game marked the first match in front of fans since the death of Millwall chairman John Belson. A row in Gillen boss Neil Harris carried out a reef together before kickoff, while the away fans sang the late owner's name throughout the match. Um, yeah, I don't think that was in some. Yeah. Um, that was a kind of weird match report to be honest here. Attendance 5,012. Um, 2,000 mil fans there apparently. Um, obviously, here's the teams. The first, the first choice team. It looks like uh, Biakovsky, Alex Mitchell, Cooper, Wallace, Honeyman, Billy Mitchell, Sa, Brian, uh, Brian Watt. No, Joe Brian. Uh, Watmore, Bradshaw, and Nisbet. Second half team was Long, Ockley, Hutchinson. Leonard, McNamara, uh, Saville, Evans, Adam Malachy, Fleming, Imaku, and Vogel Sammer. And the referee was John Busby. Uh, yeah, that's... Match report from the new guy, Kiro Evans, at Southern News. Not sure about that, to be honest. Uh, okay, moving on. What happened to George Honeyman? This from Southern News, the Kalu UK. Uh, Mill manager shares George Honeyman update uh, after Gillingham match. The midfielder had to go off after only 20 minutes into the game. Gary Rout has revealed George Honeyman suffered from a tight quad that left him feeling like he couldn't run properly. Mill's friend over Gillingham. The Lions emerged as 2 0 victory, victors at Preston Priestfield as they got their preseason off to a strong start. Uh, the only real negative for the London side was an issue suffered by Honeyman, who pulled up after 20 minutes after receiving treatment from medical staff who was subbed off to Danny McMara. After the game, Rowett said, He felt uh, his cord was a little bit tight. Uh, Thursday we worked to almost the full match level, so of course players are going to be tight. 
fans are going to be a bit, little bit sore. And we hope everyone can get through, but you're occasionally going to get one or two players who are all going to break. And that's what you have to do is push them to that next level. He just felt a little bit tight. He wasn't sure if he pulled anything, but he just couldn't run properly. And therefore, at that point, we take him off. Honeyman's issue triggered first of four substitutions for Gary Rout as 10 changes made at half time. Before Alex Mitchell came back on for McNamara in the closing stages. Uh, the first half team created several chances um, and could have gone into the break more than 1 0 lead, but the second half team failed to match that same intensity, something which the Mill manager took note of. He said, All semi plays with the first half performance. I thought the second half performance was actually really poor. The quarter senior team all expect us to show a little bit more drive to press and get on the ball. But we know sometimes these games just peter out a little bit. So the fact that the uh, all bar George Hunman got through it on Sky is massive positive. It's more minutes in the legs and it's more opportunities for young players like Adama to show what they can do. Yes, he does seem to be one that is uh, promising, Adama and Maku. But here's the thing, I've seen him play for the under-21s, I think in this game as well. I'm not sure he played through the middle, which is what you want. Playing him up front, he looks a lot better there. We stick him out on the wings, not the same. Uh, now, um, one player that hasn't been mentioned, is not involved, Tyler Burry. Obviously, um, looking to leave apparently. Um, bids have come in, and he's kind of turned his nose up at them. He thinks he's better than that. Hmm, okay, we'll see. This is also from SouthernNews.co.uk. Uh, Mill boss provides latest update on potential Tyler Burry move ahead of Gillingham. So obviously this was made before that game, but we saw he wasn't involved. Uh, the winger made 24 league appearances last season. Uh, Gary Rout has admitted he's reluctant to play Tyler Burry in the season and wants to focus on players who are definitely staying at the club. The young winger appears to be on his way out of the den after the season for Millwall. The 22-year-old uh, was previously linked with the transfer to League One side Oxford United. But a move has yet to emerge. Ahead of Mill's preseason game away at Gillingham, Rowett said the star wants to move on and may not feature in friendly games. The manager told me, I think the situation is with Tyler that he wants a new challenge and to move on. We've had opportunities for him to do that at the moment because of that. It's important that we try and work with the squad that will be here next season. And for him, it's about getting his fitness and making sure when his opportunity comes, he's ready to do well somewhere else. So I think there's a bit of clarity there. What we we'll reluctant to do is play Tyler in some of these games and he's going to end up being somewhere else. Uh, so I think it's important we work with the players who are going to be here this year. But for him, it's about taking the right opportunity when that comes up. And he'll move this season, as we've spoken about previously. Uh, Barry made 24 appearances in the championship last season, including starting nine games. He scored one goal and registered one assist in that time. Um, so yeah, it looks like 100% is going to be going because um, they're literally not playing him and his manager said he's leaving so we'll see so even if it's a loan deal on the last day of transfer deadline day it's literally like get him out of there <laughs> he's not we, he doesn't want to be here we don't want him to get him out which is sad but I mean what can you do? What can you do? Um, um, I will only, I, you could only say, like, um, obviously this week we've had the Delhi Alice thing come out. Is, is it that kind of situation? Is he, has he got mental health problems or, or what? Is he struggling with the fame and fortune? I don't know. Um, but this does seem to be a thing that happens quite a lot, doesn't it? But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, good luck to the lad, whatever's, whatever's going on. Whether it's with him or just the situation. This didn't work out, did it? And he's definitely moving on. So there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.